Hey guys, my name's Lama, and today I wanted to talk to you about the Warcraft Direct announcement that we got a couple of days ago, giving us Classic Fresh. Now, like a lot of you, I am extremely hype about this information. However, that doesn't mean that I can't see a few really big glaring issues with regards to the information that we got, and that's why I thought I would discuss it all with you guys today. Not only so that we can be hyped together on all of the pros that are coming that have been announced with regards to the announcement of a couple of days ago, but also so that we can focus on a couple of the issues that I think are really going to be quite monumental, to be honest with you, in regards to how much of a problem they're going to cause for WoW in the long term. So let's dive into it. Now, for context, before we start discussing the problems, for anyone who missed the Warcraft Direct announcement, basically I'm going to summarize now very quickly the major points that are relevant for what we're going to be talking about in this video okay so in regards to a retail we got the announcement that player housing is coming in world of warcraft midnight which is the next expansion coming for retail there is the undermined patch upcoming and many details in regards to the new areas that we'll be discovering in retail wow as well as information on some new mounts and things of that nature Moving on from retail, we also got announcements with regards to Cataclysm Classic in the form of Dragon Soul being the final patch of the Cataclysm Classic that will be coming soon, and that most importantly in regards to this part of the game, we will be receiving Myths of Pandaria Classic as well, and that is scheduled for the summer of next year. Beyond that, the news that I am most hyped for, and I'm sure many of you will be as well if you're watching my video, is going to be that we are getting Fresh Era servers as well, that is Classic Era, which will both be encompassing of the traditional way of playing WoW, as well as also a new Hardcore Realm as well. And the announcement does also let us know that the Classic Era Realm will be transitioning into TBC Classic as well. Now, personally, that is the information that I am most excited for, but it is also some of the information that leads into our first problem. So let's get on with the problems now, shall we? So the first and biggest problem in regards to the information we have received is over-diversification in what WoW products are available. So much so that while recording this, I've actually realized that when I was giving the overview of the information given to us at Warcraft Direct, I didn't even mention Season of Discovery, which has also had it announced that it is going to have new endgame content that features the Scarlet Crusade, much like many people have asked for in a Classic Plus context, um, as well as also the release schedule for future raids and things of that nature. But this is really highlighting the issue at hand, which is that with so many options in a video game that is so diverse between its different game modes, in every regard, with the exception of the fact that all of them require a large amount of time in order to be able to see yourself make any realistic progress, you are going to find that you are diversifying your player base so much that a lot of these game modes are going to suffer. Now, I'll throw up on the screen here a chat from my Discord server for my guild from when I was playing in Classic originally five years ago. And basically all it is, it's just highlighting everybody's plans in regards to what they want to do when the new servers drop. You'll see from here, and this is not an isolated incident, I've actually got many different communities that I discuss with on Discord, and they all have a very similar theme of some people are wanting to prioritize playing retail, but will be playing the classic era servers on the side. Some want to play on the new hardcore server, because that's what they've been playing for months. It's the game mode they enjoy, but they don't want to be without their friends or miss out on the fresh feeling. And a lot of them are actually interested in playing Mists, uh, but aren't too interested in playing Kata. Now, because there are all of these different game modes, including Season of Discovery, which has now pretty much been swept aside by everybody that I've spoken to, you are going to find that you are splitting your player base so much that either you're going to have issues with people not being able to play with their friends or having to play a game mode they don't particularly want to play in order to play with their friends, or you're going to have game modes that fall by the wayside, much like I just joked about Season of Discovery, which is just going to be at the bottom of the pile for everybody. And then that game mode, not necessarily Season of Discovery, but whatever one it would be, just proves to find itself to be falling off so hard that it doesn't have a sufficient amount of players in order to be able to keep itself running and actually playing the way that the game is intended to be. 
Now, on a personal note, I get to play a lot more WoW than most people. I do find myself having quite a lot of free time and have the ability to play what game modes I want and for a pretty decent amount of playtime. But with that being said, even I in this position do not feel that I would be able to play Cataclysm Classic, the new Fresh Era Realms, the Hardcore Realms, Season of Discovery and Retail all at the same time. That is absolute insanity. Now, what this leads to is having to prioritize. Now, it's fairly easy for me to do. I don't play retail anymore. I've not played retail for quite some time. I just don't find it an enjoyable game. And similarly, I don't play Season of Discovery because it has all of the same things that I don't particularly like about retail. That being said, I am quite interested in playing Mists, but it's definitely the bottom of the pile for me. And just juggling between the classic era realms and hardcore is going to be more than enough that it's going to actually prove to be quite difficult for me. Now, if you are someone who works a considerably larger amount of hours than I currently do, or you have more personal commitments outside of playing WoW, chances are you're going to struggle to play even a singular one of these game modes to its fullest, and that could prove to be quite a problem. Not least of which, because obviously WoW, WoW is a game that requires a lot of time being put in in order to make progress on your character. Now, this is a bit of a double-edged sword, however, for Blizzard, because while this will, from a business perspective, be exactly what they want, because it means that there is always a game mode available that has something fresh and going on that someone will want to play, therefore reducing the amount of people that have drop-offs between expansions and such, it does also mean that you're going to alienate a lot of people who aren't really able to play any of these versions of the game, and yes, I'm sure they are banking on this for the view of selling boosting services and things of that nature but this doesn't always work well with the mindset of many of these players who would much rather just unsub on a similar note you are also going to see people who want to play two different game modes but they happen to be releasing at the same time which is the predicament i currently find myself in wanting to play the fresh hardcore experience as well as the fresh era experience but then have stagnated parts where they are less interested because what's actually going to be releasing is simply going to be for aspects of game modes that they aren't interested in, meaning you're still going to have the problems with people unsubbing anyway. Now, of course, the only way to really counteract that is going to be by having everything go on all of the time, but that is just taking this diversification problem and amplifying it to 100. Now, in defense of Blizzard, which is not something I'm ever keen to not be, I do like to present both sides of an argument, they do seem to be having some forethought that this could potentially be an issue in regards to the fact that they have limited the new servers to being a single form of each server, i.e. a PvE server, a PvP server, and a hardcore server when it comes to the classic releases. And hopefully going forward, they will do something similar in regards to consolidation to keep player bases together in smaller populations for very diverse game modes so they are able to sustain themselves longer when players like drop off from one version of a game to play another but that does remain to be seen and it is also a case that you are only really trying to fix a problem that you have in turn caused by the decisions that you have made this is of course probably going to be what they would think of as the best course of action because it is what allows them to have this diversity that helps to keep subscriber figures up while also helping maintain the longevity of the game. However, it does mean that there are going to be certain game modes that are more likely to fall below others in regards to people's priorities and just have these game modes naturally die off, which does seem to be an issue that Blizzard doesn't really yet have a solution for. Now, the final point I want to make on this is that, in all fairness to Blizzard, it does seem like they are at least trying to put thought into these potential issues, because things like the fact that they have announced that the new hardcore server is going to have the same progression rate that the era servers have, as opposed to releasing with all content readily available, does mean that that it's going to offer something that would encourage people to move off of the servers that currently exist and onto the new server so that then everybody can be found in a singular place in an attempt to consolidate the current situation we have with two hardcore servers with both dwindling populations. This in principle should go a long way to unifying that player base. So hopefully that is a good move on Blizzard's part 
and something that will help with at least that one game mode going forward. But it does mean that they are at least showing and setting a precedent for looking to do that for going forward. Now, with all that being said, and the majority of this relatively negative video behind us, I do want to say that there will be some more videos coming out about this announcement that are going to be inherently more positive, because there are a lot of things to be excited about in the Warcraft Direct announcement that was made, and a lot of content for us to cover here, so if you are interested in that, please do consider subscribing to the channel. But for now, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Laters.